The legend lives on from the Chippewa on down, or so the song goes, about one of Michigan's most well-known shipwrecks. People still love talking about the Edmund Fitzgerald and the unanswered questions behind its sinking, so we took a closer look. We still linger with the question of what happened. What happened so suddenly that 29 men apparently never had a chance for survival in Lake Superior on November 10th of 1975. That date in November of 1975 will forever be remembered in the state of Michigan. It was on that night that the Edmund Fitzgerald battled the rough waters of Lake Superior as the skies of November turned gloomy. That was a battle she would ultimately lose just shy of Whitefish Bay. And while the Fitz was just one of over 6,000 vessels that sit at the bottom of the Great Lakes, it always seems to garner the most attention from Michigan natives. So what makes the Fitzgerald stand out? I talked to former TV5 reporter Rick Mixter for that answer. There's a couple of points. The first is it's modern, 1975. The second is everybody disappeared. You know, even 1958, when the Bradley went down on Lake Michigan, they found most of the crew, sadly, just two survivors. In 66, off the tip of the thumb, the uh, Morel went down. Most of the crew was found. So how was it in 75 that 29 guys completely vanished? And then, of course, that piqued the interest of a Canadian songwriter named Gordon Lightfoot, who wrote a song that went to number two on the charts in 1976. So the legend, I think, was really born then. The legend of the Fitzgerald may have been born then, but the Witch of November, as Lightfoot called it, had already been well known. Let's take a trip to the First Warren 5 Weather Center for a closer look. The Witch of November refers to powerful storm systems that develop during the month of November. We often see these powerful storm systems track across the Great Lakes after getting themselves organized east of the Rockies. It's where cold air masses from Canada meet warm and humid air masses from the Gulf of Mexico. As they develop, they ride the jet stream into the region where they feed off the warm waters of the Great Lakes, allowing them to intensify more than they otherwise would. That brings strong winds and high waves in addition to any rain or snow that might develop, and the storm that sank the Edmund Fitzgerald was no different. That storm system was getting itself organized in central Kansas right around the time the Edmund Fitzgerald and the Arthur M. Anderson were getting ready to leave their ports. And it wasn't long after that that the National Weather Service issued their first warning of the night, a gale warning for the possibility of winds around 45 knots. Captain Ernest McSorley of the Fitzgerald and Captain Jesse Cooper of the Anderson were both very experienced, and because of that warning, they decided to take a more northerly route across Lake Superior, hoping to gain some protection from the Canadian Highlands. But it wasn't long after they left that things started to take a turn for the worse. The National Weather Service ultimately upgraded the gale warning to a storm warning for winds near 50 knots and waves of around 8 to 16 feet. They became even more concerned for the night ahead as they made their turn off to the southeast in northern Lake Superior. That storm system was moving very quickly off to the north and east and ultimately was turning the winds more northwesterly, allowing them to build the waves even higher than they already were and around 5 p.m. that night, the Arthur M. Anderson reported wind gusts of around 75 knots and waves that were near 12 to 18 feet. Now, these conditions not completely unheard of on the Great Lakes during the month of November. And in the case of the Fitzgerald, it could have just been a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. When we're talking about big waves, we're looking for three ingredients. A strong wind, which we certainly had, a very persistent wind that we saw with that storm system, and also a long fetch or a long distance over water for that wind to ascend essentially build up some momentum and start to build those waves even higher. And it was around 7 p.m. that night that the winds were starting to approach 80 to 85 miles per hour as far as the gusts go, and the waves could have been greater than 25 and a half feet. Captain Cooper of the Anderson checked in on the Fitzgerald, and that's when Captain McSorley said, we're holding our own. That was the last communication ever received from the Fitzgerald. She now rests 530 feet below the surface, about 17 miles from Whitefish Point. While it's clear that the weather was a challenge that night when the Witch of November came stealing, Rick Mixter says no one knows for sure what actually caused her to go down. It's completely up to, you know, to debate. Some people say it was a series of three storms or the three sisters. Some still believe holding on to the false feeling that it somehow ran aground and that's where it you know, wrecked its bottom and it couldn't recover from there. Still other people People just believe it was that single wave that pushed them under and others are now kind of hinting that there was a structural failure too that the ship had been not up kept very well and that was part of the problem too I don't think we'll ever know now
Well, that's part of the mystery, isn't it? And that's Absolutely. why people have been so fascinated by this oh, shipwreck yeah. for so long. Great yeah. story. And, that, and that's one of our more interesting stories that we do every single mm -hmm. year. And it seems like every year I learn something new. And yeah. that's why I keep going back to that. Special thanks to Rick Mixter for coming yeah. in mm -hmm. and helping us out with that. Uh, Trisha Lewis for mm -hmm. her fantastic editing skills. Gary Falkenhagen for making all the directing mm -hmm. look great. And of course, our art director, Dan Jacqueline. I don't know if yeah. you guys saw the little freighters yes. that were in the story. He <laughs> made those. So it was a total team effort. And yeah. uh, it's awesome. It's a great story. So such a yeah. fantastic job. Wow. Yeah. Learn so much too about what kind of storm systems happen this time of year. Yeah. yeah. It just an incredible. And those were just the significant wave heights that were around 25 and a half feet. I mean, you get rogue waves that could have right. been That's even true. taller than that. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's still a mystery. Technology has allowed us to sort of simulate those conditions. Yeah. But, uh, you know, still we'll never truly know what it was actually like. Mm, I so guess fascinating. we're left to wonder.